Hi, everybody. Welcome back to White Knowledge is Power, Understanding Racism in America and Why White People Should Know Black History. Today, I want to talk about a story that I recently saw that is just absolutely shocking that I haven't seen being spoken about on the news or on TikTok, YouTube, anything like that. Um, so I saw that a six-year-old black girl who lives in Louisiana was <clears throat> going to be attending a new school that was all white. Okay, so this was going to be their first black student and the school board did not want her to come onto this campus. Remember, she's only a kindergartner, um, but they did not want to have a black little girl in their kindergarten classroom. There were protests um, from parents. They were pulling their other students out of the school because this little black girl was going to be coming into their room. Um, <laughs> this girl actually had to even test to be put into this all white school. And so eventually the admissions process let her in after testing into this school and after delaying her admittance from the beginning of the year until November, they finally said, okay, you can come. However, found out later that when she got to the school, there were protests outside there were adults yelling racial slurs at her. There was only one teacher at the school who was willing to teach her because she was a little black girl and she didn't have anyone to play with at recess. So not only did she have to go to this brand new school late in the year, but she had to deal with adults yelling racial slurs at her as she walked into the building every single day being alone in a classroom taught by one teacher with no one to play with at recess and when an interviewer asked her how she felt about everything she said the only time that she was really scared was when she saw someone in the crowd holding a black baby doll in a coffin how disgusting and heartbreaking is that this poor little girl who just wants to go to school being met with grown adults yelling hatred at her pulling their children out of the classroom just so they won't be with her in the room to only having one member of the faculty willing to even educate this child oh and i also forgot to mention that not only did she have to deal with protests going on outside of the, of the of the school itself, but because of the the level of danger, four federal agents had to escort her and her mother in every single day as she was attending the school. Now, who I'm talking about is actually not somebody from recent times, but it wasn't that long ago, and that is Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges was a little black girl whose family moved down to New Orleans, Louisiana. And in the 1960s, right when segregation became legal in our school system, um, a group of five black children tested to be admitted into some all white schools. Um, Ruby was the only one at this time who actually ended up going to this specific school. But all of the things that I said earlier were true. She had to be escorted with her mother by four federal marshals. There were grown adults yelling racial slurs at her as she entered the building. There was only one teacher who would teach her. And so she literally had no classmates or peers that year. She had no one to play with at recess. And she said one of the only times she felt really scared was when she saw that black baby doll in a coffin um, from one of the protesting crowds. And this was all due to public schools being, you know, segregation had already ended at this time, but schools in this area, in the South especially, they were very slow to enact the desegregation. So finally, the government were like, okay, you have to let um, people of color into your school. And so begrudgingly, they had to do it. And um, it took a long time 
for it to be okay. And what I think is important about stories like this is that if you hadn't known any of the facts that I had told you and and let you know that this happened in 1960, this feels like something that could happen right now. This feels very true to form in what we're seeing down in Florida. It, you know, not only racially, but also LGBTQ plus, um, and with the book banning and education at a very high level of threat in this country, it just, it's a slippery slope to end up right back where we were. And 1960 was not that long ago. So we must be vigilant with our education system. We must, we can't allow anyone to remove the ability to educate our children. And that includes book banning. And I'm gonna be talking more about book banning and the dangers of book banning in schools in, in future episodes. Um, but it just really is a very scary thought that this whole incident feels like it could happen today or tomorrow still in this country. That's just brushing the surface of desegregation and Ruby Bridges in general. Um, but I just wanted to kind of put that perspective out there um, and see if anyone else felt that that sounded like something that could happen right now. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening. Um, I hope that you learned a little bit and, um, if you want a deeper dive into Ruby Bridges, or if you have any other cases or stories that you want me to cover on this channel, please let me know. I'm always looking for more stories to cover, more history that I may not be aware of because there's a lot that I'm sure I'm not aware of. Um, and part of the reason I want to do this channel is not only to educate others, but to continue to educate myself about the history, the true history of America. And um, I think it's really important work to be doing. So I really appreciate your support and let's continue to grow and educate and let's end racism together. Hold me close.